Welcome back everybody to your setting up PHP and MySQL and DreamHost tutorial series. I'm Caleb from Caleb Video Maker 2 and I just I just think we should just dive right in. So from the last video we officially connected to the database without any errors but we still have nothing on the page to show for it. What's the point in doing all that work if you have nothing to show for it? So what we want to do is we want to take the database content and display it on the page and that can be useful for so many things. A lot of web pages are used for what's known as CRUD, create, read, update, and delete. So essentially we are doing one of those four things in this video series. We are going to read that data from the database. And if you don't really understand all of that, that's okay. You don't need to have a full understanding to follow this little video. Essentially we're just taking the database and echoing it on the screen. Very simple. So let's go to our code. And the very first thing we need to do is put a semicolon to end that statement. That will allow us to add more to our script. Now we need to reference this connection, but how do we go about doing that? Because up here, we are just connecting and then putting a semicolon and that's it. Well, the way we do this is we assign this whole thing to a variable. And you declare variables in PHP with a dollar sign and then the name. So we're just going to call this my, oops, <laughs> my SQL I. And we are going to set that equal to, or assign this, this value. So basically whatever this evaluates to, we are assigning it to this variable. So essentially whenever we need to talk to the database, we can reference this variable. So now we can execute a query on our database by referencing this variable, my SQL I, then we need to access a function inside of this variable. And if you don't know functions and all that good stuff, it doesn't really matter. Essentially, we need to make this little arrow thing. <laughs> and we need to say query. And this is a function that's going to take some more parameters. The parameters that it wants is the query itself. So as if we were writing in PHP my admin SQL window, you just put the same query that you want to put right here. So in the previous videos, I did select everything from tutorials. I'm going to use that same command here. When you try writing this out, you might do something like this. But you will find that this is going to cause you errors because the query itself actually has to be in quotes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to surround this with double quotes. Then end it with a semicolon. And then what we need to do is we need to take the result of this whole thing and assign it to a new variable. So if we go up a line, we can create a variable, call it result, and set it equal to this whole statement. So now the result of this query is going to be stored in this variable called result. Now to display stuff on the screen, we use the echo command. But if you try this, you'll find that it's not going to work the way we want. I'll show you here. Let's save it. And then I will go to FileZilla, upload, refresh. Oh man, could not be converted to string. So rather than going through a process to convert this to a string, we are just going to do something even cooler. So let's, let's just get rid of this line for now. We are going to use what's known as a for each loop. Within here, we are going to give the loop something we can iterate over. That means we can go through one step at a time. So we can actually pass the result into this for each loop. And then we say as, and then we name every single item in that result set. So if you, don't, if you guys don't have programming experience, this might be a little bit much, but just follow along. It, it'll make sense as we go along. So we want to reference every single item in this result set. Well, this result set is going to return, I think four rows. So the things we want to name are the rows. So we can name it row. So essentially we are going to iterate through this table and we can reference the row using this name. So let's try it now. Let's echo out this row and see what happens. Save. Yes. Refresh. Okay, you can see we get the result array, 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 array. <laughs> You're probably wondering why? Well, the reason is because we're taking the rows and trying to echo them all out at once. So P 
PHP sees that as an array and it just echoes array. So what we need to do is we actually need to iterate over every single column inside of that array. So we need to nest another for each loop inside of this for each loop. So now, what are we iterating over? We're iterating over each row. And what is it we want to access within the row? We want to access the column. Or if you want to name it a little more specifically, you could say the field, because that is an individual value for a column. And then within here, we could echo the field. Let's save it. Yes. Refresh. Okay, we got something. We got array one, joining dream host, array two, creating our database, array three, filezilla, array four, PHP my admin. <laughs> so obviously this is uh, not exactly what we were looking for. So we need to fix this up a little bit. The first thing, I don't think we need this echo statement here because all it does is say array. It's, it's useless, so I'm gonna get rid of that. At least now, all we'll have is the ID and then the name of the article. So we're getting closer. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a space after the field. So the way you do that is with a dot and then inside of quotes, put a space. Now let's uh, upload it and see what it looks like. Great, we're getting closer. The next thing I want to do is on every single line, I only want one row. So I want this to be on a separate line. So how do we do that? Let's go back. And it's actually pretty easy. After every single row, we want to make a new line. So all we got to do is say echo. And we can actually put HTML inside of here. So we could say break. Great, that looks so much better. So that is essentially what we were going for, but there is still a couple of things that you could do to improve this. Next, what we can do is put everything inside of a paragraph. Uh, we want to do that with each row because we want each row to be a paragraph, not each field. So what we do is here, echo quotes. We're gonna open a paragraph tag in that statement. And then down here, we are going to Echo the closing tag. We're no longer going to need this break statement because paragraphs by default break down to the next line. So it's kind of unneeded. It would just give extra space. So I saved it. Let's see what it does. Great, it's actually looking pretty darn good. That is the basics of displaying data in a web page. And you can see if you actually either inspect this and view the source or uh, just inspect it, you can see how this actually does create HTML. We have HTML, head, head, body, paragraphs, head, body. So that is it, guys. <laughs> Hopefully that was a lot of help. If you guys have any questions at all, leave a comment and keep watching this playlist because if there's anything simple I can do, I will make another video. Uh, I'm probably gonna cancel this hosting, so <laughs> try to do it within the next month once once that's over, I'm not going to have access to this website any longer. So if you guys have any suggestions or anything, just leave a comment. And thank you guys. Please be sure to subscribe. And I will see you guys in the next video.